Hello everybody, Wayne from 101 Animation and somebody had asked me about uh, how to go about doing facial expressions and um, you know the, the, the best way I know is to uh, just keep it simple like everything I'm always talking about. For example, I've loaded up uh, some this is from the Richard Williams book, Animator Survival Kit. And uh, the main thing to look at is, is I mean, you can look at these, but look how simple they are right there. But the red ones, here you got different expressions and right here he's being very graphic. But in these, like these right here, just note, how simple he keeps it and let's go to the next page same thing here mainly i mean he's talking about animation here but mainly right here look at the red drawings and he, all he does is he just draws a circle and he creates completely different facial expressions so we're, we're gonna start there and what I'll do is I'll show you what I mean the so we got let's just say we got all these round heads and I'll get more into you know constructed facial expressions but this is really what you go off of and if you by the way if you uh, if any of you follow Aaron Blaze, um, he talks about this too. And just about, you know, you just take these simple shapes like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw in two eyes and a nose. On all of these. So here we got eight uh, eight heads and uh, with two eyes and a nose. I do something like I think to myself. I, I feel it in myself or you can use a mirror. A lot of animators use mirrors to look at themselves to try to get that expression. Um, I usually just sort of, well, I only do it this way. I just sort of feel it in my face and I will make weird faces. So let's say this character is, he's surprised. And that's all I want to do. I just, there's a real simple surprise. And this one will go with the standard, there's an angry and right there. Completely different facial expressions. Here we'll have one that's sly, maybe looking uh, screen left over there. Keep the eyebrows down like that. Right there, he's, and then he's looking over here. Obviously, we can do an evil type of smile. Here, we'll do a happy smile and you know with that you can also you know put in the open mouth and then on this one oh, i forgot the nose uh let's say shh, maybe this character's sheepish or maybe a little guilty or something I'll put the mouth way down there, more sheepish, because I put the mouth down there. But if I come in and I change that mouth, there we have a completely different type of expression, more empathetic, I would say. And uh, then on some, you know, you...
closed eyes, eyebrow up, eyebrow down, and you can just do a whole variation. of different type of facial expressions. And this is, a lot of times, if I'm struggling mm -hmm. with a certain uh, attitude I'm trying to get within the character, I'll, I'll go, I'll just do something simple like these, you know, these very simple little thumbnails. And because the whole idea is you don't want to get it too complicated. It's not like uh, uh, we have the ability to render in there where we're, we're going to show you know tones and values and all those other sorts of things it's it's sort of difficult in line animation traditional character animation and what i mean by that let's say that we have character there and we're thinking okay this character's there and then there's bags under the eyes and we start drawing the bags, then the eyebrows, that. And if we put too much in it in the beginning, we're thinking more about the actual drawing than just the, the, the pure uh, simplicity of the facial expression. I'm not saying that you couldn't use this sort of thing, but the first thing you want to do is just figure out what it is exactly that you're trying to convey. And, the, the, and how you go about that is uh, get the mirror or do it within yourself. Watch if I, if I go like this. Now he's still angry, but he's talking. And then let's say I come up here. Now he's showing some teeth and look how simple I did it. And so now it's more of a, a sneer, snicker, I should say. And it's those little simple uh, type of graphic uh, shapes and forms that lines that you put in there that will get you there quick instead of uh, you know if you're you know if I do a drawing and I'm, I'm constructing it and now here th th this is a drawing this is a head and there's the center line and I'm trying to figure out as far as putting in a facial expression on this. Well, let me take, I'll take this drawing here and I'll apply it to, to this drawing there. And I'm look, I, I look up there and I'm thinking, okay, right there, I already know he's looking down I mean the eyebrows are down and even if there's forms and structure on top of it I got that to go by and then I can just go off of that and put it in maybe a little squash there and then I can put in the you know a more structural drawing but but it was this one that I went off of, of, of to tr just get first figure out the simplicity of it and to understand the emotion of the character so then I put that in and then if I if this is the character design all I do is start to put the construction of this particular design of the character. You know, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. And if I want, I can put in a um, line right there. It's squashing in the middle with eyebrows and everything coming in. And here's eyebrow eyebrow 
And these are the things that are going to convey the emotion. It is really in the eyes and the mouth. And there is stretch and squash in, uh, you know, if you're in using a classic character, there's stretch and squash within the lower face right there. And you can use that. It's like when I have them snickering here, squashes the cheek a little bit there, which helps add to the the uh to making it believable in that classic sense but it, but if you're dealing with characters like uh charles schultz characters the peanuts which are brilliant i i would i highly recommend that that you study charles schultz uh he just he was able to i haven't drawn him in in years but uh he was able to do things with eyes that simple and then he put in mouths like this but he was able to convey so much in just simple lines with it, with his characters that i learned a ton watching or observing his and drawing his uh characters I guess that's supposed to be Charlie Brown, sorry. So like I said, I haven't drawn him in a while, but study him. And then you, uh, it, it will just teach you how to keep it uh, uh, straight to the point without getting too caught up in uh, worrying about the anatomy and then everything looking, looking off and awkward. That's what happens. I notice that a lot in um, of drawings I see with beginners is they're, they're, they put in too many lines in there and it just it, it kills it because that's part of the art of animation drawing, uh, cartoon drawing is how to convey the emotion but with very uh, few lines. Okay, so okay so let's say that uh so we go from those uh simple graphic uh, uh shapes and designs and then we but let's say we have a character that is has more uh construction in it uh for instance i'll think of uh i'll just make something up here I'm not sure where i'm going here We'll just go with sort of maybe just a standard sort of dog and you know like I always say start off with the big shapes but here we got the basic structure of, of the dog some ears that come up like so so here we got just your generic construction for some kind of dog and what, what I want to show you is if I go over that let's say that I decide to make the dog just simply smiling I'm gonna think about the structure And say the dog just has a mask. Face comes in like so, then back. And I'll just bring the, the smile somewhere. Back like so. And 
here's our dog smiling coming off there you want to think about your construction but we're this is really all we're talking about really is just how to get the expressions in there so there we got this dog and there he is smiling but then on the next one let's say we take lock that out add a drawing now I'm going to have him with a different attitude and I'm thinking to myself we'll just go with the uh, now, now he's a little angry and here I'm using the eyebrows and the eyes, that's what's conveying his emotions. Everything else. Mouth coming down. And right in that area, I just, right in that area. So if I go, turn that one off, turn that one on, and then go back there, you can see how it's just, it's in this area. Now you can also, what would happen is the cheeks, like I was saying, the lower face, the cheeks. If he's, let's take the same dog And now we're going to say the dog's got a more of a O mouth. So he's, uh, we'll, we'll make him a little surprised. And if you look at me, I'm, do, I'm actually doing it in my own face and I'm trying to feel it and he comes down and yes the jaw's gonna maybe drop a little bit it is gonna drop a little bit And then on these, on this one, you know, I'll get rid of that and I'll, I'll look how I can simplify the whole thing. Let me get back up here. Right there's the mask of the face coming down. Comes down like so. And basically, there, there I go. I, I've just created a little bit of, you know, oh, oh, like he's, oh, what's that? Or what's going on over there? And everything's going to, you're going to do all your construction with the particular design of, of your character. But on this, this part here, uh, what I should do is... <clears throat> Let me do a quick trace off here. On this part right there, the, the face, this is the pliable part. The cheeks, the face, the jaws. And it would, 
drop down a little bit. So I'll give you a demonstration of that to make that more clear. But let's just take a look at with this same same exact uh, uh, foundation that I, I created with this dog. I was able to create, you know, three different type of faces. And then what you do is, let's say you have a character. Oh, let's create a big character with a long face and we'll give it three quarter view. And this part right here, this is the cranium. And this, in most animation, classic animation, the cranium stays solid. It doesn't stretch and squash. If you're going for that look, there's no steadfast rule. But with most of them, you, you just, you keep that cranium solid. So there we got uh, this basic construction of a character show some ears over there I'm gonna come down center line and then I'll put in some eyes like so back lip give him a little bit of chin I don't know here somewhere like that but this is where we're going to be focusing on the most also also something this is uh a good thing to remember is, let's say we have our eye here. This was a Freddie Moore concept that everything comes off from the bottom of the eyeball or the pupil. Everything comes off from there so here we got the here's the eyeball right there eyelid put a little skin up there and then the eyebrow up there and uh, that what that does is it helps to unify and make your drawing more appealing so let's say that I get a little bit more into it there and it just makes it a little bit more appealing where everything is unified in there okay but now we're going to take this character and we're going to we're going to give him some squash in the face so I take that cranium I'm going to keep it the same right there and with this this character, he has a long face, but I'm going to just squash that lower face just slightly. Here's the eye line. Cranium ear lines up right there. Cheek comes right into the area where the eyes connect, which I mean right there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I won't make him really angry, but maybe it's just, down. I'm gonna keep the nose really just, the same. Make 
you those eyes. Now what I did is I put a little squash. It's very subtle, but I put a little squash in the face right there. Let's just give my neck. And it's really, they're, they're just about identical. But what happened was, right in this area, this is, if you look at me right here, the cheeks right here, that, that is where a lot of the expression is going to come in and stretch and squash. So when that cheek comes up there, it's going to squash a little bit on that eye, a little bit on this eye, cheek, everything comes up here, the entire muzzle is squashing so if, if you go back and forth between those drawings just look back and forth you can see a little bit of the, the squash from the stretch to the squash on this one and that's what you want to be aware of those are the the crucial the most crucial things on expressions is as far as I'm concerned is the eyes and the mouth and the tilt of the head the tilt will say a lot if you if you have heads that are let's take this one looking up and what I'm thinking about is this character is pretty cocky or superior feels superior something really cool might have just happened for for this particular character and eyes are shut right there I think I'm drawing me And the head is tilted up a little bit. So that's what I mean about the importance of the tilt. The tilt will say a lot too as far as what the attitude of the character is. And then if the character is, is uh, you know, guilty of something let's say and what that usually means if we're guilty we we're, our heads go down and I'll do this really extreme extreme one top of the head there Shoulders come up now. I'm just talking about facial expressions here. I haven't been talking about uh, the the body language when you do uh, full poses The the gesture of the body the body language is also going to express the attitude of the character but on this one We're just talking about the facial expressions and how to go about it Characters just sort of looking up, and then I'm going to make the eyebrows come down like so. And look, you can see how simple I made it. We're looking down upon the nose. I'm not getting, I don't want to get in whole drawing thing but notice how simple I kept it 
I'm thinking about the foreshortening of the head, but I gotta be able to see the eyes to convey what the character is thinking and feeling. And that simple little mouth right there shows us, you know, character's kinda sad or blue, you know, not sh sure really. Uh, doesn't look guilty, but uh, just, just kinda down. But if I go like that real quick, look, that gives a, a completely different attitude. So that's why I really, it's the tilts, the eyes, and the mouth. And where, where, where you place, if I put it just a little one there, really gives it much more of a sad feel right there. And the shoulder coming up does too, but mainly in here. That's what you want to look for. So, um... Let me just keep drawing. Uh, so let's say that we got we, we just come up with designs. And it can happen in any kind of designs. If you just use button eyes. And I want to lead everything out in that direction. I open up this eye. And here I got more of a graphic character. And with those simple expressions in the eye, and if you want to get more graphic, you could even put a couple lines up there. And then if you want, watch when I put in this line right here. It's the characters, one, one eye is, uh, eyebrows up, this one right there, the other one. But maybe I want to do a little bit more intensity, so I'll draw that bottom eyelid in there. And that changes the expression. It's those little lines like so that will help convey the emotion and what the character is thinking. Because this is, in character animation, that is the whole idea. The whole idea is to try to emote what the character is thinking. Then I take this character... And right there, if I was going to be doing construction, be there. But now I'm going to stretch out that bottom half. And now the character is just saying something, but the, the mouth did open just ever so slightly. Let me show some teeth there. And he had a chin, but this stretches just a little bit. Kept the eyes exactly the same. But then I just changed the whole attitude and expression with that mouth. Um... What else? <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to just think. I mean, that, that it's really the key, is this area. It, it's what I, I mean, I'm just gonna draw. Uh,
And there we got another expression of characters saying, making an O sound. There you go. Let's say character is going to have a wide open mouth. I'm going to just stretch this down a little bit and now I'm going to open the mouth. Notice again it's very simple what I'm putting in there. It's hard enough as it is. Just keep it simple. And then we got tongue down there. Back of the throat. Right there. And this part is where you just start putting construction on. But just note how... Once again, I kept everything very simple with the shapes. And I would go over this. The, these are my roughs. I'd go over it. Character could be yelling like that. Where's my chin? There's the chin. Yelling like that. Let's say the character's yelling forward attitude of the character is the same but the placement so I place the neck back there Same, same exact thing. So all I did was stretch the bottom of it. Let me make that perfectly clear again. Just make it a front view. Wash. To a stretch. Go to the squash. To a stretch, I'd even squash this more. One, 
two, three. And you can see the movement in it. And it goes squash, moving to a stretch. Get rid of that. To a stretch, a little bit too big there. And I always make little changes here and there. Um, and another thing about when you're doing facial expressions, you want to be aware of if a character for, for the most part, if a character is let's say looking I keep drawing the same kind of character uh, let's say a character is looking screen right and the character is going to end up looking uh, screen left With an expression like this. So we got uh, the characters looking screen right here, and then he ends up looking screen left over here. There will always be a, a blink, there will always be a change in the eyes. So if a character, whenever a character is held to one position, there will, oh, you can do it in the anticipation, or you just do it on the actual movement that goes between this drawing and this drawing, but there will always be let's just say the character did anticipation and is coming down, leading towards this way. Let's rough in the big shapes. You don't have to have the character, you know, extremely squinting. It could just be a simple... I blink. So this is one, two, three. To show the change of attitude in the character, this is what happens. There's always eye blinks. It's, it's surprising how many eye blinks. That's also how you can keep your character alive. If, if a character is uh, smiling, halfway content in a sense, do a profile here. Flush this out a little bit more. Get a little 
mustache. Smiles there. And then the next major pose we want to make the attitude stronger so the next pose is going to be the same character So we got the same character, just a little happier. Happy, but then becomes even a little happier. What will happen in between there What will happen in between there is going to be a blink. He, I mean, you can have it where the character just goes like that, but what makes it more believable and lifelike is as the character, and let's say this didn't call for a big take. We're not doing a take here. It's not like a big take with a big anticipation or anything. It's just a very simple movement. I'm feeling it in my face. I'm saying, even with this little open mouth, I'm actually in my face. I'm trying to feel it.
best drawing ever. But even within that, I'll just put that there, he blinks and comes up. That helps to convey real emotion with most of the scenes. If this drawing is held for, let's say, a couple seconds or even just 24 frames, if it's held 1001 and then he co goes up into it, I'm not saying that you hold on this blink a long time. It can just be a four frame uh, uh, blink and but he comes but he comes up into it and blinks are what will show uh, the the change in emotion be it from uh, content to be uh, happier than he was uh, be it from uh, happy to angry uh, you use the blinks all the time to convey uh, uh, facial expressions. So that's another note. Um, I hope this is all making sense. Uh, let me see. So what I recommend, I tell you who's really great to study. They're all great to study. Study everybody. Uh, Steven Silver, he, uh, he could come up with the greatest attitudes with, uh, he can do it in all sorts of styles, but his, when he does it in the graphic styles, he's able to really come up with just some beautiful different types of attitudes. So I, I recommend you study him, I, uh, study Schultz, study uh, the nine old men uh, and the young nine old men, uh, study everybody. I got this book, which is a very, very good book. I hope you can see this. It's uh, facial expressions, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this, has it's filled with photographs with people with different looks and when if you do get this book or you get something close to it uh, what you want to do is you want to take this and then simplify it in the way that I was showing you at the very beginning of uh, with, the, with those circles I mean for instance I see one guy I'll just draw in Oops, wrong head tilt. Got a head tilt going this way. I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. There's a little bit of tilt like that. But what's interesting is he's got this one mouth. It's just kind of open like that. And he, he's sort of smiling. See a little bit bottom. And I'll just stop right there. It's sort of like, okay, that's the sort of attitude I, I want to get. And maybe I'll draw I'll draw a couple folds up here, because I can see that's what he's got there. Then the ear, but right there, I I got that basic attitude of his. Here's the here's another guy. He's just This is the facial gesture. He's looking down this way. I go straight there. And I'll just go with another design. But he's looking down and side of the cranium. Three quarter view. And the thing that I no notice more than anything else is he just shocked. You're just super surprised at something. Come down there. Bring that lip out.
And once I get this, then I can go into, you know, the drawing aspect of it, solidify the drawing, all that. But it's this part that is, I'm trying to convey that he's got this shocked look at whatever he is looking at down there. And what's his hair like he, anyway? He's just got some hair. Comes up like that. And if you're going, now look, when you do use the rest of the body, these are just facial expressions, but when you do use the rest of the body, it's, it's a long shot um, or even a medium shot, use the posture, the body language, uh, I know I'm repeating myself, but use it to convey the attitude. Make it help convey the attitude of the character. It's like he's in shock, so I'm going to exaggerate this neck. I'm going to just make it a straight coming up there. Get into the drawing more. And then I'd go over this one, but... For my, for my first rough, I would use, you know, this would be good enough for me to be able to uh, go back over and start to tie down. I sometimes will do drawings uh, that are just so shorthand. It matters what the design of the character is. I got this one character that I animate a lot, Francois, and I will... Um, I'll get so into, I'll just do drawings like this. Just so, as long I'm looking at them up there. And I will really just exaggerate the hell out of the attitude with them. Now I can get away with that with him because he's, he's more of a cartoony character. With the, the more straight characters, you got to be more, one, you got to, your drawing's got to come in, uh, your drawing ability's got to come in, but uh, you want to be more subtle. I would still use that very simple, even if it's a straight character, let's say, I just give the, forget about that one. Um, I will still use Sometimes on straight characters, it's even more important to keep everything very, very simple as far as what the attitude is. Because with the straighter characters, you cannot, you can't exaggerate everything or else it doesn't, they don't look uh, believable as the the superhero or the prince or whatever, you know, they, they use in the, the feature classic features. So, I mean, I will go that simple in the very beginning and then just stop right there. On this sort of character, like Francois, what I'll do is I will really exaggerate it and get, get into the attitude and push it more than I think is actually necessary. Because I know when I go back in to tie it down that I'm going to probably lose a lot of this uh, uh, first uh, spontaneity that I, I originally put in. Um, there's that, that. Uh, I think I'm going to be coming to the end here. I, I don't know what else of... Uh, just want to definitely and use the mirror if it's going to help you use the mirror a lot of people you, you I, I use the mirror I just haven't lately don't forget closed eyes for if a character I'll make this character a little more 
just right. Closed eyes convey a lot too. There's many different ways to to use closed eyes. For instance, character like this, a little bit of an undershot. And I'm just going to have the character just laughing slightly. The closed eyes will convey Now I'm just putting more construction in it, still keeping it simple. But remember how I had started off this drawing. I had started it off extremely simple. Then I can just go in and keep working it and working it. But the main thing right here was what I'd started off with the closed eyes. That was conveying the attitude and then with the mouth again. What else to talk about is the same thing with with animals. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. If you got, uh, you know, let's say we got, let's take Mickey Mouse. Mickey's hard to draw, by the way. <laughs> Everyone's seen him so much, so, but. If I was going to do a Mickey pose and Mickey's looking a bit worried about something, here's the widow's peak is Mickey's eyebrows and there's his jowls right there. So we're doing this cartoony kind of. I'm not a pro at drawing Mickey. But right there, I used the widow's peak right there, the mask of the face, to convey his attitude looking down. If you got the same thing, let's say that we got, um, just gonna say a, a duck. Let's go the other direction. Any kind of 40s duck we'll just come up with here. Comes down. And there's the bill. Well, in this one. happy and then we'll go to this one and I'm 
Let's give him a O mouth. Give him the O mouth with a smile, and we'll keep the bill going all the way. And so I got the same duck, except now he's got an O mouth. That would be the mouth shape but remember if I want to make the duck just have the O mouth without an attitude all you do is simplify it to where the bill comes out like so and there's no line continuing back to the cheek just comes right there you can show the other side of it. not a very good drawing but um, I hope you get the idea and if you want to make it even smaller that'll be up to you this is sort of like with, with where I'm sort of talking about dialogue here but But this is how you convey, especially, um, you know, birds with, that have a long beak or something. You just forget about that long line that comes back there. If I put that in there, it's going to make him smiling as he's doing it. Um, I take it out, and it makes him just sort of just, oh, I don't know what he's saying in the particular situation. Uh, oof. That's a bad drawing. And um, I, I think that's about it. I, the thing I'd recommend all of you to do is just whatever design, whatever the character comes up uh, is designed by, figure out that character's shapes and forms. Uh, you know, if this character's just got these little cheeks like that well then just take it and start experimenting and just put in those simple simple expressions Just like that, and just do a bunch of them, and then you're gonna start, th this is just your shorthand, thumbnails, whatever you want to, to show uh, the simple expressions when you go to it. Another good practice is take, take eyes, and there's all sorts of eyes. Here you got the more classic cartoony eye, like so but if I take that eye and I put it right in the middle and I show less of the eyelids it looks more shocked 
than if I put in more eyelids. So let me, I'll show you what I mean by that. And I put the iris, the pupil directly in the middle of the eyeball. And what that does, it gives it more of a, a feeling of shock. And I put in a lighter line that goes as, as far as the eyelid because when we're in shock, everything expands, the, the, the eyelids, they open up wide so you don't see as much. This is why on eyelids, just side note, you'll see that it's, they, it's a thicker line on the top. The reason why is, is really what, they're, what you're trying to convey there is a sort of the cast shadow and the thickness of the eyelid that wraps around the eyeball. Um, you got also, don't forget, you got eyes that are more for the straight, realistic characters. Practice those also. Thicker up here. Come in. And then down here you get a little thickness. Comes down. And think about the construction of the eyebrow. That fits. Understand that the eyebrow fits. It's like a big the, the, there's a muscle up here and that's why as you get older it gets it starts to overlap the eyeball because that skin starts to sag down but remember that that is up there if you're drawing uh, you know more straight characters but that muscle is it sort of represents the same thing as Mickey's mask right there this represents his eyebrows going with the eyeballs. If Mickey's eyeballs are a little bit more sympathetic, like so, Make the mass the same thing. And it will all help convey the emotion. Uh, I, th I think that's it. Uh, let me go back uh, to eye ba eyeballs. Just draw, you know, you can do the googly eyes if you want. That's fine. Practice those. They're fun to do. Um, Just start making up shapes and see what you can get working with the different eyes and what sort of attitude you can get. I mean, it's, it's gotten to where, you know, you got the Simpsons. They're wall-eyed. They're very good. It's good to study. All sorts of eyes. You got eyes that are more comic book. You know, they're more of an illustration style. Something as simple as that. Try it in different styles. Here we got eye that's squinting. 
but I'm being more angular with it. Remember that eyes also got an eyeball. The eyeball is it is a ball and it fits inside of the eye socket. I'm going to do more of a rendering realistic. And we, I'm going to exaggerate this. We got this heavy lid that goes over and wraps around the eyeball. There's the iris. Pupil, I mean, sorry. Putting in the iris. And this lid right there fits around it and it's the same thing down here plus remember let me get rid of this plus remember the eyeballs are hinged down here if we were drawing on the other side it would be hinged down there and what I mean by that is when the eye blinks, it's, you think of this eyelid, think of it as, oh uh, God, well, armadillo, the way it retracts, and it, but it's on a hinge and it goes in a circle, the covering of it, and it, it retracts and it goes down and around so it's hinged there and if, if we draw through it's hid, hinged over there the bottom lid let's put that in also has that thickness to it it's a plane right there but the autumn, bottom lid does not really it it can come up if you squint, but it's mostly the eye, the top eyelid that goes up and down from the hinge. That's located here and over there. So to make that perfectly clear, what I mean by that is you got Out a little bit what you got I'm gonna really exaggerate this we'll say this is the side view pupil somewhere up there bottom eyelid And when it comes down, it comes down this direction. And if it's closed, it will be down here. Covering up the eyeball. So just just remember that that's where it's hinged. You don't you never want it to if if you're animating an eye blink. I'm getting too stiff here. What you don't want to do you don't want the eye to start come down like that and like this and then it's closed. <laughs> close what you want to do is you want it to wrap around like 
so. And then it coming down, it's hinged right there. Coming down, and then it would close. Hope that makes sense. So here we got the iris, pupil, iris, pupil, and on this one, we got the thickness to the eyelid, the thickness down there. And always remember that when you're doing your eye blinks. Um, I hope this helps. Uh, that's it. All right.